My name is Athena Latoka. I am originally from Alaska and I'm currently living in New York. I'm still trying to take it in because this is the first time I've been able to really see the work up. I work on the floor, so the work is it starts with a feeling, actually, trying to understand what's going on, trying to kind of bring forth a certain sense of place and gesture, and come to an understanding of not only what it can be, but what it represents and where it's coming from. So coming from Alaska, being born in Alaska, a lot of my understanding of land and place and how, how we come to terms with that is greatly influenced by growing up in Alaska and being around large mass forms and space, like the vastness um, of some of the terrain, the tundra flats, um, the glacial fields. And a lot of uh, where that comes from is, is not just looking at geological processes or evolutionary processes, geothermic situations, but also there's a sense of inner tumult, um, inner t uh, tensions, um, trying to find my own way in the world while also understanding various conflict that might be occurring maybe socially, culturally, politically. Um, so there's a lot of grappling with those types of situations when I'm in the studio working. A lot of that sensibility comes out in the work uh, because it's, it's they're complicated emotions and they're complicated, uh, they're complicated concepts, you know, to find your way through. In order to get a lot of that across, um, it's, impo it's important for me uh, to work on a large scale because through scale we understand our own placement within the world, that, that sense of monumentality. Uh, you can feel overwhelmed or you can feel a sense of freedom. Large scale comes from just maybe not reining in those possibilities of letting something be or of it becoming. I mean, quite often the process starts with um, just really mixing up maybe a gallon or a couple gallons of ink. And sometimes it's just throwing it out, throwing it right down onto the surface. And having that initiation and trying to understand immediately from that first gesture what's going on, what it is, and what kind of uh, direction it feels like it needs to go in. So it's my responding to that initial <laughs> gesture of just the throw or the pour um, and starting to interact with it. A lot of the, the gestures that you see, they're, they're larger, they're bigger than me. How do you make a gesture like that? Um, so sometimes it's, you know, the arm only goes so far. You know, you have, what, a couple feet there. But if you walk that out, you know, you get, you get a longer gesture. Um, so a lot of these, the gestures that you see in the work might be a gesture that is extended, the reach is extended by the, by the entire, the movement of the entire body or with various tools. Several years ago when I was oil painting, um, I was doing a lot of driving and I would see off the side of the road, I would see um, tire shred. You know, we see it along the highways quite often. And even, I, even when I was a child, you know, I remember being captivated by these things. Um, but never, I never did anything about it. I finally found myself pulling over off to the side of the road and picking up tire shred and just throwing it in the back and then bringing it into the studio because it was something that, for me, it was 
there is something mysterious about it. There is something very alluring or captivating, but it um, it it opened the imagination because you didn't know what it was. Leonardo da Vinci talked about that, right? The different ways that you can help encourage the imagination. So. For me, I often see things that aren't there, you know, so, but it's just like letting your mind go. So the tire shreds started coming into the studio. And what I've learned over the years is anything that you bring into the studio becomes fair game. You know, all bets are off, everything's open, everything's on the table. So in the throes of making the work, I will sometimes just, you know, I need something to move this ink or move this paint. I need something to interact with it or to disrupt the way that I'm thinking about something. So I'll just grab whatever is out there. So, um, so by having that tire shred in the studio, it was just something that I reached out to because it was never, it was never brought into the studio with the intent that I'm going to. This will be a tool. It was. It was started as a, um, a source of inspiration or imagination. When I'm making work that is specific to a location or site, what is important for me is to walk the terrain, drive the terrain, run the terrain, sit in the terrain, <laughs> you know, but to be, to be physically present there in all manners of knowing how that presence might be. Um, with that, there's an understanding of atmosphere, weather, you know, is it cloudy out? How does that affect the way that you see and understand color um, or space? Um, how you navigate through that? Is there flora or fauna there? And how are those represented in the, in the overall evolution of that particular environment? Uh, because as we know, there's local flora and fauna that have evolved together in specific spaces. And with that, there's an intricate relationship between all these different life, these different beings, creatures, and life forces. So that's important for me. Um, the air might have a particular taste, the fragrances. Um, so when I'm out on these sites, not only being physically present and having that quietude there is important, but also video, um, still images, um, images of my moving through the space or panning through the area as well. Um, all of that becomes incredibly important for me because when I'm not there, and then I'm back in the studio, it's good to have those, uh, that resource material to recall the experience of place. And with that, the memory and what is triggered and what comes forward through the process of working with those images, the sounds, um, and the memories. Like I said before, I don't know what I've done. <laughs> or I don't know what I'm doing until I see what I've done, right? Um, so a lot of this, I couldn't really see what was going on until we actually first unrolled it. And then when we put it up on the wall, you know, and I found myself yesterday after putting it up, I found myself going back and looking at it over and over and going, what is this? Um, so a lot of there's, I can't tell you how many layers are on here because part of the process is throwing down layers, letting it dry, coming back to it, flooding the surface again and reworking it. So there's a dredging process that comes up and that recalls all other kinds of things. But, um, but there's a lot of dredging, uh, scraping, uh, 
manipulation, repositioning, you know, because you can loosen up all the ink and you have all of this, uh, the pigment, you know, the sediment, you know, and then you have this stuff and then you can redirect it and add more medium to it and make it, it's like hand making new media in a way. Um, so there's this churning, um, which is part of the process, which is part of the psychology of the work, which is also part of the materiality. Um, so there's, you know, so for me, it's just, it's all wrapped up. Um, so some of these areas here where there's heavy, thick layers on the surface of the shellac medium, uh, it starts looking and feeling like something toxic almost, um, like an oil slick, um, you know, which harkens back to, you know, our use and abuse of um, resources, um, what we're doing with our excavation, our mining, um, and growing up in Alaska, you know, there was, I was exposed to the oil mining industry, um, but in all of the roadways that were created to get to these places, you know, that become then roadways that help us navigate these these spaces or the this this uh, land um, so it's there's these really interesting complex relationships in terms of who we are as humans and how we develop our world and the way that we develop it access to resources you know if we didn't have these access roads out there in the mining industries we wouldn't have other people being able to get out there to these spaces and so you're like well that's a negative thing, to <laughs> but then it's a positive thing because without that, we wouldn't have that access. So, but anyway, all of that, all of that comes up into play when I'm looking at all the, the development of the layers, the application of the material. Um, and so there becomes a certain kind of strata. There's a stratigraphy to the work as well. And I'm really interested in things like that, uh, those particular ideas. I think it also talks about um, geological strata because it, it reminds me of that too. It reminds me of excavation. Um, it reminds me of you know, archeology, span how we dig into the past to understand who we are. And then being in the city, you know, and I'm in residence at the, um, at the Silver Art Projects in the World Trade Center and overlooking the 9-11 Memorial site. I'm literally looking out the window and seeing the footprint of where the Twin Towers were. You know, and I keep thinking, how do these events, how do these situations, um, embed themselves into the psyche and how do you how do you find your way through that and what is the manifestation of that how does it come out and so quite often I think oh maybe my work will start becoming a little more hard edge or a little more geometric or more you know but I'm finding it it is just erupting or turning into these churning spaces even more. And so I'm constantly then having to look back and continually question, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And constantly wonder, you know, how long does this go for, you know, before things shift?